Hello, you're watching the ISF 2013 World Championship uh, broadcast by Chaos TV here. I am James Stress O'Leary alongside Panky for this uh, semi final matchup here for the World Championship. It's Denmark versus the Netherlands, and Picks and Bands are already underway. And what a surprise! Is a cinder band. Yeah, this is uh, made quite an impact with that champion so far this weekend. And from what we heard, it's not the first time he's been playing it too. So the fact that he even got to show it off this event uh, is a little bit of a surprise, so, so to speak. But uh, well, he explained to us exactly why it uh, is a constant ban against him. Yeah, seen it a couple of times already. It has proved to be very good, actually. I mean. Not the most orthodox of supports by any means, but it's done a good job when they've needed it to. Yeah, it definitely has. And I mean, she's landed on a couple of very clutch stuns. The ultimate doesn't do too much damage to most targets without any AP later in the game. But, yeah, along the stuns, sorry, the stuns and the slows that he has landed have managed to pick up some very quick kills and some very nice secures, and that uh, the utility there is enough that it's. Uh, really helped round out their teams from time to time but there's still plenty of other people that can do a very similar job to a very solid effect so uh, let's see who he goes with this time round. yeah as i was going to say alongside that uh, the rest of the bands rounding out cassidy and zed on the side of denmark renekton and lee sin and shen for the netherlands so we've seen a lot of kazakhs out of morsu when zed hasn't been available i wonder whether we'll see that again and of course, we saw Denmark playing yesterday. I wonder how their uh, games have been since then. Of course, they have made it here to the semi final, so they have been victorious. Just waiting on their first lock in here. Yeah, it's a very similar choice if that goes through to what they've played the last couple of days. At least is the Torin B. Sorry, yes, we saw Santorin be very effective on that, at least through a lot of their group stage games. I mean, admittedly, they weren't the closest of matchups. A lot of the group stage games were walkovers one way or the other, depending on who was playing. But you still get a good feel for people knowing their champions and knowing their limits, so to speak. And Santorin made some very aggressive plays with that, uh, at least a couple of times over. So, definitely knows the champion very well. Right, what will the Netherlands answer be? We saw this in the last game, they actually did go for Corky and Vi, and it proved to be very good for them. They do have to be careful, though, that they don't face up against the uh, Caitlyn lane alongside Sona that they did in the previous game, and that gave them a little bit of trouble. They were able to bounce back a strong performance, but uh, it was a bit of a shaky early game out of the Netherlands. Yeah, but uh, well, Mikhail's first Surya series, Aaron is letting, is not quite a catastrophic mid pick, unfortunately, like the uh, Belgium team ran against that via that, that Zyra pick. No escapes, no way to get away from that Vault Breaker. Really punished the Belgium team with that uh, non stop aggression coming out from Brobro. But uh, Ari shouldn't have so much of a tough time doing it. I mean, she can still die a lot. If the Vault Breaker lands, it can interrupt a Spirit of Rush. It can then be cancelled again by a knock-up with her ult. And if they've managed to get that cast... Uh, sorry, not the cast in its band. But if they manage to get a mid laner with a lot of CC, maybe a fizz, fizz with that fish, they can cancel another Spirit Rush if it's timed well enough with that ultimate. So it's still not completely ungankable, but it's certainly a lot harder than Cyrus was. That's very interesting. Uh, now that we've seen a lot of Kazakhs coming out of Morsu, Denmark are actually going to pick that up for themselves. I'm trying to rack my brain and figure out whether they played it yesterday. I kind of want to say that they may have played it in one game, but I'm not too sure on that one. It does deny that from Morsu. Looks like Morsu's going to go with that Irelia instead, however, with Gragas in the mid lane. Yeah, and I really like the Gregus against Arya because yes, she's got that Spirit Rush. Yes, she can uh, reposition pretty easily and quickly. But once you've landed that Gregus Barrel, if you push from the right direction, it's going to take 
about two spirit rushes to get back to where she was beforehand and because of the slight cooldown in between them you've got that time to push her into your team push her into a position she doesn't like and really lock her down 10 marks still looking for their ad carry and support duo lane again we saw earlier that caitlin sona worked very well against corky lane so uh Will Denmark go for that? They're going to go for Caitlyn Thresh, which is uh, a little less poke, but a bit more formidable in the uh, engage perspective. Now it's just down to Kialis who they want to pick up. Lots of options left for him. Of course, they can still figure out whether they want to go for that 2v1 or play th up against the 2v2 lanes. So... Uh, Plenty of options still available for the Netherlands. We do see this uh, Dutch Irelia again. We saw Irelia played earlier on in the group stages. I mean, we didn't really get to properly uh, experience her at that situation because the game was very one sided. But it's a different pick. It's an interesting pick, and it's something that, again, we haven't seen in competitive play. For quite some time, she's fallen out. To be completely honest, as much to uh, Wicked's detest, but when they've taken away his Kazix, he's got to go with something slightly different. Got to go something slightly more versatile, but similar effects. And Aurelia does that job very, very well, sticking to a target, sticking to a squishy target in the back line, assassinating them, and absorbing, to be honest, a lot more damage than Kazix too. So she, arguably, in my opinion is the better pick for the job, but we did see him be very, very effective with that Kha'Zix too, so not to knock his play. Kha'Zix does a crazy amount of damage, and uh, well, it's a little bit higher risk, but it's just as high a reward. So, uh, we'll see how he does with the uh, with the Aurelia instead. Yeah, I blinked and there was the swap that I was expecting out of Santorin and New God Bro. Of course, they uh, keep doing that, making sure that their opponents are as caught off guard as possible when it comes to their lane matchups. Saw them do that many times yesterday and also fool me as we went into the game. I thought we were looking at something else and then uh, turned out the Shivana was jungle after all. But this game, uh, I wasn't expecting to see Kha'Zix jungle too much. That has happened a couple of times, but it's not uh, had the highest success rate really. So, gamble on that Caitlyn again. It's something we saw regularly yesterday. It's something he saw a lot. He tried to switch it up a little bit earlier on, used the Varus, but didn't quite have the same effect. He couldn't quite punish using the range as much, and uh, quickly ended back up on his Caitlyn. Whether we see a lane top here, we'll have to wait and see, but Caitlyn Thresh is a very powerful lane in against a 2v1 situation. Because of the range that Caitlyn can land her damage on anyway, she's already going to be harassing people from quite a distance. And then... Should a hook land or should a flay land, they're pulled even closer so she's going to land another extra one or two auto attacks in the time it takes to get back out of that distance. So it can be incredibly deadly. And against a melee champion like Irelia, who has no dedicated escape ability, she has a dash, but it's an aggressive dash, not an escape dash, then uh, she could be in some serious trouble if she gets hooked in. So she's got to be very, very careful for that. We did see Danish squad here. Very, very aggressively moving into the Dutch jungle, but they were spotted on their way in by that drunk Gregus. Caught drinking on the job was Gregus, but uh, as you said, Danish team have now established position inside the jungle of the Netherlands. Of course, this is game number one of our semi finals here. Meanwhile, I believe Korea are currently playing up against. Was it Finland or Spain? I still haven't had the update on that I one. I don't but... believe they finished first quarter final, which is why we have the PGL casters in here with us as well. Because right, okay. there isn't another semi final going on at the moment. But uh, oh. we did see with this aggressive engage from the Danish team, they planted some deep wards. They planted a lane swap ward too to try and figure out who they were going to be up against. They will about, or they are about to see, it's Irelia. Yeah, they will spot Irelia as she passes over that ward, and that uh, will signify that, that Caitlyn will be going up against Corky by the looks of things. 
How the lanes are panning out. That's a flash used already out from Gamble and the barrier as well. Gamble dropped very low flash forward. That is the first blood picked up for Hood Boss. And that they might used be what... a lot for that though. Yeah, they did use a lot, but that might be what they need here to uh, prevent that very early game dominance that we saw from Caitlyn in the previous game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not even the first, like the first player went to Gregor, so the goal's not an issue, and of course they're not going to base, so the goal's not going to be an issue, but just the fact that she's not going to be in lane, giving Corky that slight experience advantage should help him out a lot in keeping her off of his back and keeping that lane push, but both Corky and Lulu are lacking flash, and there's no exhaust on Lulu either now, so they need to be very careful of hooks, they need to be very careful of Elise, who has started at the blue buff, so will be heading down towards this half of the map at around the three and a half, four minute mark, so that will be the area she's looking to initially gank. So Lulu's got to ward up aggressively. She is pinking that tri bush initially, so that's going to be clear for a while. But she's also going to make sure that river is covered. Yeah, of course, Elise is so good at getting into lane and uh, ganking with the uh, cocoon as well as the rappel to close the distance. There's a lot of trading going up in the top lane and both just healing it all back. Meanwhile, down in bottom lane, you can see that Gamble is uh, level two as well all of them have hit that second level so no major advantage right yet but you can see they are going fairly even on the cs yeah, that should stay fairly similar like this now they wouldn't be pushed too far in because the damage trades will be fairly even the lane's already pushing towards caitlin uh, towards Corky and uh, Lulu, sorry, so the CS advantage is going to start heading towards Corky should he not miss too many, as there is a bigger wave there waiting for him. But other than that, that lane's going to steadily out a little bit now. Of course, he hasn't based, they haven't shopped, he hasn't used that bonus gold yet. Gragas has just gone back to use his first blood gold, so he's got that extra chalice up on Ari now. So he's going to be able to spam that out and push her in aggressively a lot more. Which is not necessarily the best thing because of Vi. Vi's pre-6 ganks are pretty strong. And Ari's escapes aren't because she hasn't got that spirit rush. But keeping her pressures under the turret, stopping her from roaming, stopping her from uh, pressure and Gragas, then uh, maybe the better option. As Centurion finds Brobro -Bro in the top lane. Yeah, they are trading a lot in the tribush and Brobro -Bro already realizes that Godbro is on his way out of lane for that of course was able to angle his way past more soon get in position there forced the junglers away from each other you did see a hook land in the bottom lane Roldo went full in on that Corky used the ignite used everything he could but they couldn't quite finish Corky off and Metalex just backed up a little weight and is now based by another orange blade and boots and this is something we saw a lot out of Santorin yesterday, spending a lot of time uh, counter jungling over on the uh, opposition side and just taking as much as he pleases right now. And it, we saw that yesterday so very much. He just spent more time in the first five minutes in his opponent's jungle than he did in his own. So it looks to continue that trend once again, stealing away some of the rates. So, Ari's up there with those double orange down. She's got enough points in her queue that she can easily clear waves with two uh, orbs of deception. But, Gregor's in a very similar position, and of course, has that chalice, can easily turn the lane around. So, the pair of them are just going to be pushing the wave into each other repeatedly, and then farming wraith caps. Look again at the CS, very even across all lanes, only really top lane. It uh, has any kind of disparities. Uh, morsu has been able to put down. Uh, sorry, Godbro has been able to put down quite a lot of damage on Morsu in every season. I'm so used to seeing Morsu playing on Kazix today that uh, my mind is instantly defaulting back to uh, it being Morsu. But as these lanes continue, see Caitlyn already opting for the level two boots. A lot of times we'll see. Uh, AD carries delay this level two boots in favor of more damage items. Uh, why? Well, what could the reasoning be for picking up those boots so early? Simply the fact that getting more attacks down in this short space of time while she's on Corky, being able to dart in and out away from Lulu's Saras and Corky's Saras, and with moves like ooh, well, it's about to move like this, with Vi coming in very aggressively. Okay, the Spirit Breaker's there, but with a quick 
uh, 90 caliber net running away from that uh, extra speed is extra useful and landing more and more to attacks in the process we do Ooh, see Charm, elite coming in the mid lane charm lands in the mid lane nice explosive cask should just about keep hood bar safe but that was a really nice uh, charm into cocoon combo so yeah sorry back to uh Back to that bottom lane there, Kaylin. While normally you go for more damage because you're not planning to man many attacks, so you want to get as much damage out in those few attacks you get, down here she has the opportunity to land lots of attacks in more dragged out fights. So the attack speed's giving her a minor damage boost because of that, and just the, the movement speed bonus she's going to get from it on those short range champions. Ooh, Morsu just going to all in uh, up in the top lane against Ni Godbro. Nearly picks up the kill. There's one auto attack away from getting that, and uh, Lee Godbro has been forced to flash and back out behind his turret, so uh, Morsu's actually got a good position here. He might be able to uh, go on Lee Godbro once again, forces the ultimate used. That Void Assault will keep him invisible for a second or two. Godbro manages to heal up and will be able to just start trading with Morsu under the turret, who will go aggressive that turret is going to pick up the kill so they trade even there so neat god bro will breathe a sigh of relief down in the bottom lane death sentence has landed metal x forced to valkyrie away from uh, the thresh caitlin combination ace in the hole is available however it is going to get channeled metal x will use the barrier to keep himself alive So, both mid laners at 6 now, both have that blue buff, and again, I'd like to see Ari start roaming, but Gragas is just going to push her into turret every time she does, and punish her for it. We did see a really nice play from Vi earlier on. At least showed herself an award in the top lane, so Vi completely cleared the bottom half of the Danish jungle. Tried to come onto the bottom lane to gank, but unfortunately couldn't quite pull it off, but now she's 6 too. So her ganks are about to come a lot more powerful, and she can do them down lane a lot easier than before. And i really like to see her do that something in the bottom lane, as those hooks have been landing on Corky quite regularly, she can easily bait them with that. Instead, she goes over the wall using that cheeky trick on the Vault Breaker, looks for one target, and it's rolled out. Yeah, Sultan Battery does land. Roldo manages to flash away after the initial effect from the ultimate death sentence will land as well. As Brobro now forced to back out after uh, taking quite a bit of damage. That was uh, an ultimate expended for nothing really is. Uh, it really is. Managing to get away up in the top lane, chased out towards her own red buff. I really feel they could have done that a lot better. Either... She could have waited in the river bush and at least checked for the wards. If nothing had happened, she could have waited and she could have got a Vault Breaker and Ultimate Combo off. That would have resulted in a kill instead. Or she, if they had moved, the no it's warded and then she could have come by a lane. They went in there really early before Lulu arrived, before they had all their damage there. Corky was still not quite in range and Roldo still had Flash. So, okay, they burned it. It's gone. But... They could have played that a whole lot better with the uh, the combination they had if they'd have just waited for Lulu and timed the Vault Breaker a bit better. Just a little bit too greedy, a little bit too rushed in that bottom lane resulted in uh, the escape for Thresh. And Hood Boss is uh, maybe looking to get some more damage onto Mikko here, who is fairly low. One combination would likely take Mikko out of the equation. But uh, with that ultimate being down from Vi for another quarter of its cooldown with Death Sentence, doesn't quite land it in the bottom lane. As uh, Mikko actually is going to go aggressive onto this one and force the issue, uses the Spirit Rush. Well, Flashback doesn't quite get the incoming Orb of Deception. And uh, Hoodboss survives through that one. He does, but he did get completely outplayed with that uh, Spirit Rush Flash combination to miss his ultimate. And it's now put Ari ever so slightly ahead in the health game, which, while isn't particularly catastrophic in one sense, if one charm could land, Greg's can finish off in one combo. So he has to play very careful, and indeed does. He uses one barrel to clear the wave, and then will leave back for his fountain. Oh no, cancelled it, changed his mind. <laughs> Ari, however, did leave and uh, picks up those Sorcerer's Boots as well as the Fiendish Codex will get that extra cooldown reduction in the ability power from that. That will obviously allow her to throw out those Orb of Deceptions as her blue time's out. So, uh, good pickup on Ari there. Morsu and Nigodbro once again trading back and forth up in this top lane. It looks like every time actually down in the bottom lane, Kialis forces that wild growth on himself is not quite enough as Roldo will pick up the kill. 
Metal X left alone now in this bottom lane. Beautiful lantern gank there from Thresh and Elise as a combo. Pulling a ride in full range on the lantern. A flay before anything else. Then the hook. And then Elise managed to use the stun too. She actually gets another hook here onto Metalik. And they didn't use the ult from before, so it forces him to flash over the box. Yeah, good flash out over the box. We'll keep Metalik safe. He's quite low on mana here, so even with Bro Bro around, they have walked over the ward. Bro Bro's just going to farm through this wave and make sure that Metalik will stay safe here. You can see that uh, 112 CS in the middle lane to 95. Athene's Unholy Grail has been finished on Gragas. That will, of course, uh, give him that extra cooldown reduction. So both mid laners opting for that rather than uh, any kind of flat damage, which is to be, uh, to be expected on these uh, champions that are being played in this mid roll. Kialis looking to try and establish some wards down here in the bottom lane, but already the pink wards have come out from Roldo, so making sure that there's no real way of establishing control, really. Only that pink ward and dragon does remain, and apart from that, Kialis is out of wards, so we'll have to back and pick up some more fairly soon if they want to keep control of the map down in the bottom. Same. A dragon's still up. We're looking for someone to come around and do it right now. We're reaching that kind of stage in the game where a well-placed, well-timed gank from one team or another could open up that dragon pit. It has been pinked and is currently under Dutch control, but with the bottom lane spacing and the blue buff spawning, they're not too ready for it yet. But I would really like to see Vi come down the lane here now and try and make something happen bottom to open up that dragon pit. We've still got... Lulu's ultimate. Exhaust is back it up. Corky's got his barrier. Vi has everything as well. So she can get into these lane bushes and try and make something happen. But they do spot Elise in the uh, tri bush and notice she's in the area. And with Kazix having gone missing from top lane, all five members of the Danish team are on to the dragon. And the Danish team haven't cleared that away though. So that pink ward is spotting everything they're doing now. They will notice. The ward there, but it's too little too late as uh, Denmark will take down that dragon and extend their lead now to around about 2,000 as uh, they look to push through this bottom lane with Elise as well. So then they get what would be their second turret of the game down here after taking down that mid turret already, and this one is already fairly low. Yeah, that should fall down pretty quickly, especially... Yeah, as there's now no support, Gamble and Roldo up past the turret and gonna let the creeps finish it off. So there is the second turret of the game for DK with a quick answer in that top lane by Aurelia. Now Aurelia is gonna keep the push going. Vi is in the corner waiting to support her. Don't know whether the Danish guys know this, but the Godbro is taking the very safe route back up towards his top lane to make sure he does not face check into the Vi's bush. Vi is hanging around though. And with a quick Vault Breaker ultimate combo, Godbro could still be in trouble until... There we go. Vi shows herself in a ward with Gragas too. So we're going to see immediate rotate from Elise and Ari and a possible 3v3 counter game. <laughs> with the uh, Vaari and Elise being spotted, moving back towards and cut off via Gragas. They both go over that barren wall using their dash abilities, but it does mean they know they're in the red buff. They need guys looking to try and come and steal it away. Can't quite do it. Raw Thresh and Caitlyn up from the bottom lane means Lulu's had to leave Corky down there alone to try and help support this five-man army of Danes. But... Uh, they do ultimately back on away after a little bit of ward control, a little bit of love tapping, a little bit of ability throwing back with the forwards, but nothing too serious. And everything resets for a little bit as the dragon is down and the objectives are clear. So let's take stock quickly here in the game. Two kills apiece as Nigel Bro does get engaged upon by Morsu Force. To use that void assault, but here comes Bro Bro down the river. We'll look to get in, but as soon as he reveals himself, the flash comes out from Kazix, makes sure that that assault and battery is not in range. And now it looks like the Netherlands team finally will get themselves in front of this mid tower to get some damage on it. But the answer is coming here from Mikau. We'll use that Spirit Rush forward 
can't quite land the charm, but gets good at damage down on uh, the Netherlands players. So, oh, actually, explosive cast comes out. Brobro looks to go aggressive. Tried to go in with a Vault Breaker, but gets shredded down. Not even the Wild Growth can keep him alive here. As uh, the Netherlands lose one, and now Denmark maybe look to apply even more pressure, but they are falling back. They're too low health. The gamble and Mikko. Absolutely decimated bro bro it wasn't the greatest grag assault in the world didn't quite put anyone in the best of positions and then that vault breaker of the wall by Vi really exposes you no way to get back it's in a horrible position from there and every one of the danes just leapt on it and, uh, let's take a look dragon is due up at just past the 20 minute mark so we're still well away from that uh, next global objective coming up. Still too early really to do any kind of barren with it being this close. So Denmark's focus really has to be that top tower. It looks like that's where they're all starting to rotate towards. Mosu finds uh, Nigodbro in the jungle. As, uh, Santorin and Roldo are heading up towards this top lane, looking to push it through the jump in from Nigodbro as the tower will hit him a couple of times there. And he regroups with his team, so Gamble is left alone down in the bottom lane to farm and push that one through. But Denmark constantly going into lanes and then having to fall back. Their uh, aggression has been stemmed somewhat here by the Netherlands. It's, uh, uh, it's a well-timed appearance by Bro Bro that stopping that three-man dive, but. Now, Redis had to leave and they're going to take that tower down anyway. So this is going to be turret number three for the Danes. Still only one down for the Dutch side. And it's going to leave them a 3,000 gold advantage. We've got Drake spawning in a minute and a half. But the Danish squad is going to have managed to base shop and regroup. And probably come right back down there and be ready for a uh, for another five-man Baron. Just like they were first time around. Okay, Trinity Force finished on Corky, so that's the first big item. And actually, interestingly enough, an Elixir of Fortitude, not something that you'd normally see on an AD carry right at this point in the game. Normally, they would be uh, saving that up to go towards itemizing a little bit better. I wonder whether that's... Uh, it's because they know the dragon fight is likely coming, so he wants to be as strong as possible for this dragon fight. He didn't have enough gold to buy another big item to do it instead, so he's going to bring in that health, uh, that fortitude pot, give himself a bonus bit of health, and of course that bonus damage for his burst combo when the when the fight begins. We will see how that works out for Metalex. Of course, does have uh, barrier and flash available, so should be fairly safe in that fight, provided his positioning is uh, on form he's had a couple of moments today where he's found himself surrounded by the enemy but on the whole metalex has actually been performing really well today so uh, obviously preparing themselves for this dragon three turrets to one as uh, dragon is due up in about 30 seconds so there's definitely a map control advantage for denmark can they convert that into a further global objective looking at land Death Sentence didn't quite get it onto Hood Boss as he uh, managed to escape the clutches of Thresh. Now, Netherlands have collapsed in towards this. They know the dragon has just spawned. And now they're looking to pressure Denmark away from this. Denmark are actually starting to rotate away from the dragon. Explosive cast will land and split the pack. The box has been used as well. But here comes the Godbro into the fight. Actually gets shredded down very low and Brobro gets taken low as well. Gamble trying to escape out through the tribush now being chased by the rest of the Netherlands team. And a triple kill for Corky has set this one up to be a 3 for 2 exchange in favour of the Netherlands. It's a beautiful Greg assault of the start of but they immediately went in, did a little bit of harass damage to Kazix, set him off his guard, set some people on the defensive to head towards him, and as soon as they ran towards that Aurelia to try and defend Kazix, the Greg Assault pushed them all away again and split them right up, locking Kazix in against the wall as well, so it didn't let his jump a little bit longer and put him on lower health. They then finally leapt across, and everyone on the Danish team was ready to leap on him, taking him down very, very low, very quickly, while the rest of the... Uh, Sorry, the rest of the uh, Danish squad was still trying to collect themselves and close back in towards the front of the fight after being pushed back. So there's already two or three dead. 
before the Danes could really get in and amongst them. Corky picked up a couple of them easily enough, and they, from there onwards, the Danes were just split. Some were up and over at the blue buff because they were low health. Some were even back towards their wraith camp running away, and then the rest were running towards that tribush. The uh, Dane Dutch squad were very, very well grouped up, still as five in that river, chasing them down, hunting them one at a time. And just the superior positioning they had, thanks to that Gragas barrel splitting every one of the Danish squad a lot, uh, apart, allowed them to pick off which kills they wanted. Now, something funny is uh, Medlex didn't use that elixir of fortitude. <laughs> I guess he felt like he didn't need to because that fight went very well for them. But uh, that is a little bit of gold expended, but he will have that for any any time that he chooses to use it. Is, uh, I think the uh, Netherlands team... They obviously they got an overall net gain from that. The dragon plus the, the number of kills they got with that triple kill going onto Corky haven't quite been able to convert that yet into any other global objectives or sorry other towers. So the, their lanes were pushing out towards them, but I think at the tail end of that fight they just felt like they needed to get back and buy, make sure that they were uh, healed up for when the Danish team did get back on the map. So. The Netherlands still very much so uh, closing this game, closing the sorry, closing the gap in this game between themselves and Denmark. So, a little bit of a uh, lull again as the objectives are down and either team really wants to take this fight. As you mentioned, the goal gap is closing down again. It's going to close even more now that Metalex finishes off that bottom turret. Looking for whole lot of nothing at the moment. Every team slightly grouped up. The uh, Dutch squad just showing how they can fight incredibly well. is going to put the Danes a little bit on the back foot. Just, just staying a little bit more cautious now. Knowing that they can easily lose those fights despite that slight advantage they did have to begin with. But with this mid turret, the only one left standing for the uh, Dutch side. They will be looking to take that down shortly. Probably after Corky has returned out after this quick base. In, with Caitlyn down in the bottom lane, they might have, uh, well, had she been in mid, you would pretty much put your money on them having uh, engaged after Corky revealed himself on that trap and then proceeded to recall with the vision still lay. There were, there were pings down onto him, but there's only four. They don't really want to take this 4v4 in the mid lane quite yet. And even though Denmark had their advantage to begin with, you, these teams just don't want to fight each other, as you were saying. like. And it kind of is leading to this point where they're just angling around, trying to maneuver, trying to get map control, and then take a global objective, and then hope that their team fight uh, ends up going well for them, so they can convert it into more. So, I wonder whether one of the teams will start feeling a little more confident as we are seeing out of Denmark. That's a very nice vault breaker, and an explosive cast will pretty much disrupt the entire Denmark team. But here comes Metalex into the fight. Valkyries in will start picking up a couple of kills. Irelia actually picks up the double for herself. There's the Rocket Barrage to pick up another one for Corky. That's four kills overall in exchange for the life of Hood Boss. Very, very nice fight again from the Dutch side. Another brilliant Gragas ultimate. Okay, Hood Boss lost his life, but the Gragas ult just completely split the DK team up. And as a result, they weren't able to focus down the targets quite as well as the Dutch guys were. And they could pick off as who they wanted because they were still all grouped nicely as a five man. Those Gregor's Osmos really have been making these team fights, and it is now allowing this Dutch team to go in and try for the Baron. Caitlyn is still alive though, and with that Peacemaker, she has a lot of poke, so they need to make sure they don't stay too low. Peacemaker does come across, the smite is still there, so he would have been very lucky if she'd have taken it. But, it was a nice try all the same. Yeah, that would have been a little bit of a blunder if Campbell had managed to steal that one away, but... Uh, that does now swing the gold heavily in favour of uh, the Netherlands when compared to the gold gap that this game has seen since the beginning. The first time the Netherlands really do take control here though after... Uh, I, I don't want to say it was, uh, you know, a, a, a poor start because they very much so were still in the game. But once again, Metal X is just showing that in the mid game, especially when playing Corky as Corky's uh, strongest point is the mid game. He is doing a great job today. So, and mid turret still standing, but the boss pressuring it himself now with the rest of the team coming around in support. 
They've got Baron, so they've got that siege potential, and they can see Kazakh's bottom. Yeah, with that Baron buff, that siege potential is way better, as uh, we've seen time and time again. So they might finally be able to get this mid tower down. They've been here a couple of times trying to push it through, but Denmark have just had a little too much wave clear. This time it really is not enough to stop the Netherlands team, and now they push on towards this middle inner turret. They do get that cannon minion smited away. There's the death sentence onto Provo. They look to follow. Will delete him from the map, but a massive explosive cast has just shredded through the two carries from Denmark, and now Santorin drops very low, and there's no way that Denmark can really stay and defend this. And now the Netherlands are just waiting for minions as Metlex tries to engage on Nigodbro. Now they go on with Irelia as well. That is going to be another tower for the Netherlands. That Gragas home into so much damage, it's absolutely ruined the Danish health bars there. There's no Aegis up the moves, there's no AoE magic resist aura for him, and they obviously have some very low numbers themselves. You see Kazakh picking up a very quick Negascroll cloak because he knows he needs it. Hood boss's ultimate ones, they all dived in on Bro Bro, put straight on top of everyone with a barrel underneath, so it does a 10% bonus damage. Absolutely ruined. Yeah, that, uh, I think Gamble and Mikau were expecting it not to quite do so much as they went aggressive on that one. And then it ended up really just having to back off straight away from it. So, uh, they do have to be careful. This hood boss with that Rabidin's death cap has uh, a lot of damage right now. But 10 kills to 7, that's another tower goes in favour of the Netherlands. And they're starting to uh, really pick up some speed on this snowballing effect. 6k in the lead now is the goal. And uh, now I guess, well, Dragon, when is it due? Uh, oh, they just killed it. My bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm having short-term memory yeah. loss. I, I was like, I'm sure that was there like a minute ago, and it was, and now it's not there. So, Dragon not due up for a very long time now, so the next... Uh, Next duty is just to re rotate around and take some of the, more of these inner towers. Oh, Lulu getting found, spotted out by Ari, finished off by Gamble's ultimate. Picking on supports very much like the Koreans, but the rest of the Dutch side rotating towards the bottom lane, looking for this tier 2 turret to push the wave up. And then I imagine they're going to back away because they are 4v5, they know it, they can't do that fight. Pings onto the tribus though, they're looking to wait in there and perhaps catch someone on the rotate. That was someone's suggestion, but obviously they've decided against it and they are all backing up and going their separate ways. Yeah, they will back off, of course, with Lulu being down. As you said, don't really want to take a 5v4, especially when you are the team ahead. Uh, really, they've got no reason to do so. So Denmark are going to answer with a push of their own down the mid, making sure that that uh, mid lane is pushed in towards the Netherlands. They don't want to be in a situation where all three lanes are coming in towards them, as then it becomes very difficult to uh, anticipate the rotations from the Netherlands, because really they can pick any lane to go to. And Nikod Bros having a, a decent game on Kazakhs, but they kind of need to get that ball rolling a little bit faster as well. We've seen Morsu's Kazakhs a couple of times today really start picking up kills by this stage in the game and starting to turn things on their head, but they haven't really been able to find that groove. Same. Still a lot of pressure from the Dutch team. The Baron's gone, so it'll be up in about two and a half or two minutes exactly there we go. But until then, they're going to keep the pressure on. They're going to keep... Dutch, uh, the Danes locked into their base, make sure they can't come out, take objectives, can't take buffs, can't take their jungle, and of course they can't place wards. That's the really important thing here. With no wards around the Baron, the no vision, then it's all on the Dutch guys. So sit there, lay a trap, and blow them all to high heaven with that Gragas Baron. You see, they are all slightly grouped now. Just keeping the Danes a little bit on edge. Roll those little exposes, he tries to ward, and Brobro goes in. Yeah, Negon Bro gets Assault and Battery, that is Bro Bro is getting, getting shredded down, still that speed debuff from the box, ticking Metal X, manages to pick up another kill to go godlike, and a second one on top of that one, and now the Netherlands 
really just are having their way with Denmark. They pick up two and they do force Brobro back. So that means it, they won't have a full five-man contingent here in the mid lane. And Caitlyn does have a lot of wave clear, so there's not really any way that they can push through that turret. And now with the lanes pushing away from them, they do have to be careful and start rotating around a little bit more to make sure that they can secure some objectives in the future. Yeah, another couple of kills means another BF sword for Corky. So he now heads back to buy that. They've got 35 seconds on the Baron. They know this, so Gragas has got to clear this bottom lane and immediately base to get back out there and help his team. Else they risk it giving it away. But of course they know this, they have the timer, they did it last time around. But with every fight like this just going over towards the Dutch side, Danes have got to try something a little bit different. They got caught there. They did try and disengage, and even on the disengage, the Gragas Barrel dropped and still ruined their health bars. And they couldn't re-engage even if they'd wanted to. They need to be the ones making the traps, so we need to see the Danes hiding in bushes, catching someone out, blowing them up, before the Dutch side have a chance to group up on them. Once that Dutch side is grouped, they are too powerful. Yeah, and one thing that uh, the Danes are doing actually very well for a team that are on the back foot is they've established quite a lot of vision control, especially in their own jungle. As uh, the Netherlands haven't really been able to clear it out, and as I say that, they do begin to, but... Really, that's what you have to do when you are behind, is try and establish as much vision control as is humanly possible, and then use that to your advantage, and... Ooh, Death Sentence doesn't quite land onto Hood Boss. Now, the Netherlands could do with getting a few more wards out into their opponent's side, but it's actually only Kialis that has any wards in the profile, so... They won't be establishing much more vision control than they already have outside that barren area. Now, the death sentence doesn't quite hit the mark for Roldo. The Netherlands are forced back a little bit here again. Ooh, Morsu is going to get stunned by the cocoon and the box. That's moving. what they needed. Instantly, that is what the Danes needed, but Roldo is taking a lot of damage. They still, even on that engagement, took so much damage from Metalex at the back that now the Netherlands are just chasing on, and that was what they needed, but was it enough to uh, turn this game back around for the Danes? They have been rooted all the way back to their base. Yeah, I mean, they were chased down, so they couldn't really capitalize on that one, but those are the kind of picks they need. They've got a very strong team for blowing up one target. That's their strength. They did that, they blew up one target. Yes, they lost the support for it, but that's not the end of the world. They have got this bottom tower to defend now, but they can defend it successfully. They held it off for a wait. Next time around when they do that, maybe they'll be able to take an objective instead because the rest of the Dutch team won't be quite so close by it. But it's the right idea. And that one went a lot better than before. It's what they were trying to do every other time. But every other time, the Dutch team were too quick to react, too close by it. This time, however, more so, a little bit more stranded. Dragon goes down. This time I'm on top of it. So uh, <laughs> making sure that... Uh everything is noticed so baron is live once again has been for a little while and uh roldo doing his best to clear out these wards but it hasn't been able to uh, afford himself an oracles by the look of it. it was really just relying on that pink warden by the look of it only had the one so isn't really able to clear this area out as much as he would have liked to and that means that the Danes might have a little bit of trouble here if they want to try and contest should the Netherlands be going for this Baron. Looks like they're just trying to bait it for now. Caitlin is thinking about backing in the mid lane. That would open up the opportunity for the Netherlands to perhaps take down the Baron. But it would be a risky call right now. It looks like Morsu kind of senses that they need to bait this a little bit harder and pull in towards that barren pit as the lights are out for the Danes here. It looks like they want to go aggressive. Cocoon doesn't land on anything. Here comes the, Den the Denmark team. The Netherlands are landing a lot of damage down onto the Danes. The Godbro does have a Guardian Angel, but it will get popped as he jumps over that wall. Mikau trying to get out of this one as Gamble still on full health at the back, but the Netherlands are chasing down. Ace in the hole gets channeled. Metalex doesn't take that as Hood Boss will uh, position himself in front. Another Netherlands turn back towards the Baron. 
nicely played by the Netherlands team. They took all the vision away. They knew there was nothing left. They knew there was no other walls left on Thresh because he was behind. And they just hit over the wall. Gregasol only hit the front two champs there, Thresh and Elise that time around. But it was still more than enough to finish them off. And they died very quickly, leaving the three very squishy members of the Danish team alive to deal with everyone else. And there it is. I'm on a tiny cooldown again. Good boss nukes through Ari. Metalix are going to chase down Gamble. Gamble still had his barrier. He's used that. He's in Guardian Angel. Can he get the timing right? Metalix does manage to pick up the kill. Dear Lord, he's on a tiny amount of health. <laughs> Just that's what Corky's benefit is. Has that phosphorus bomb available? So got got that instant burst and followed it up with the auto attack. If he didn't have the mana or was just relying on the auto attacks there, that pretty much would have been a kill for Gamble. But nice play by Metalex. They get the Baron buff as well. Netherlands in full control once again. Eleven thousand gold in the lead here. Honestly, at this point, you've got to start looking from the Danish point of view and as what do we do differently next game? The uh, Dutch team is crazy strong now. They've got that Baron buff. They're going to come and siege up another turret. And they can more or less engage whenever the hell they want now. Providing they are there as five, they are stronger. They know that. Everyone knows that. So providing the team, the team fights are straight up 5v5, then the uh, Dutch team will come out on top. And there's just not enough vision control for the Danes. They don't have the safety of going around their own jungle to try and catch someone up, to try and find them stranded and off in one separate location. And it's just a matter of time before the, Danish, uh, the Dutch team walk straight up this middle lane to take game number one. Yeah, and it's one of those things that do you delay them as much as possible? Get extra time to figure out your game plan for the next game as it still might take them a little while to finish this one off Or do you uh, You know kind of roll over for this one and get poked down a lot This seems to be the case now. It's 5v4 in front of this turret, but they do have a lot of wave clear and there is a wave pushing in towards the top lane Of course neither team wants to lose this. This is only game number one though of the best of three So plenty of chances to come back into this one for whichever team were to drop this Denmark take the explosive casket blows them away from the uh, Danish team so No, sorry Dutch team Too many D's yeah. It's such a short <laughs> cooldown on that Greg, it's ultimate that you can just throw it out whenever he wants and he'll be back up again by the time they get to the next turret. It does a massive amount of damage, so just taking that health off the uh, opponents is more than enough. He doesn't need to kill them every time, providing he just forces them away from the turret. And in doing so, they have now opened up that bottom turret. Because Gamble and Santorin were healing, they could just rotate around to that bottom lane, take that tier 2 for free. Now top lane, yes, there's a big wave of blue creeps pushing onto it, but it's got a lot of health. It's not going to fall to those creeps, and the creeps wave will turn itself around fairly shortly. So they can ignore it and just keep going on the bottom lane. Yeah, Shirelius Revelry actually got used by the Netherlands there. They're looking to get damage onto this tower, but of course with Corky. Uh, not having quite the same range as Caitlyn, they do have to commit somewhat to this. They will go aggressive on towards Gamble. The, cloud, the cast does blow them away. Gamble is on such little health. Flash comes forward out of Brobro, -Bro, manages to pick up that kill. But it is a one for one so far, and they've lost their AD carry, so that's a fair chunk of damage that's gone down. Inhibitor does die in favor of the Netherlands, though. Gregor's ultimate did so much damage but left them all on about 100 HP. If those three people had died, they would have ended the game right there, but they got away on the tiniest slivers of health and instead stayed alive. So they do have to back away, being content with just the bottom inhibitor. But mid's taken a lot of damage too, though I have no doubt they'll be back shortly. Yeah, and with that bottom inhibitor down, but, uh, of course the Baron is still not due up for a while. It is still on the members of the Netherlands so the timing isn't quite what they'd like on that but they will take down the dragon and they'll be able to focus their efforts elsewhere that uh, the super minions in that bottom lane will mean that they can focus on either the top or mid lane of course top lane does have that tower still standing in the inner position extra towers to take down for extra gold this late in the game and Gorky's actually picked up a Banshee's Veil, doing very well for himself at 10-0-5, so Metalex is having a great game once again. 
putting down so much damage in these fights. So see. Top Wave has a big lane of creeps coming out now. It's of course pushed because of that bottom in here being dead. And it still has a tier 2 turret on there. Those are notoriously difficult to defend compared to the inhibitor turrets. And I do expect that's where we'll see the Darch team rotate towards as their next objective. Just to gain that extra bit of control, just to gain that extra thousand gold, and to keep applying the pressure to the Danish squad. Of course, it also means they're as far away from that bottom lane as possible. And with people that are having to go and sort out those super creeps in the bottom lane, it does mean they're going to be 4v5 for a lot of the time. We've seen how easy it is for them to engage. We've seen how completely unafraid they are of just walking up, tanking that turret in the top, uh, lane, taking down as much health as possible. And when they 4v5, that fear is going to be even lower down their list of priorities. Both Guardian Angels are back up on the Danish team. And now we see one is on Aurelia as well. So this is going to be a fairly extended fight when it does happen. But uh, that explosive cask is such a difference maker for the Netherlands. Every time they manage to land one that blows a couple of the carries forward, Kaku will land onto Hood Boss. This might even be the fight. Kialis gets dropped very quickly in this fight. They're still waiting for Hood Boss for that explosive cask. He absolutely shreds through a couple of the members of the Danish team. And now it looks to follow up. With the rest of the damage, Nigod Bro dropped fairly low off the back of this one as Morsu is trying to get in. Metlex actually goes aggressive, does get stunned in place, but goes legendary as he's picking up further kills here. Morsu trading with Godbro in front of the fountain, and Metlex is very low. Mikau is still alive here, and the turret is going to aggro onto the minions and give Metlex the escape, but I believe that was the. Yeah, that, that was Foxfire. Fire. Yeah. Last Fox Fox followed the entire way, shut him down. Little bit crazy there. They did lose the uh, Lulu very quickly, and that's why the hook that pulled her in. Asix is still chasing. <laughs> it really actually pops her into a guardian angel. Ooh, <laughs> oh, not a stage. <laughs> really, it's very strong. But the Baron is also about to respawn just this second. With bottom in him still down, I do suspect the Danes are just going to have to give that up to the Dutch side once more. They did take a lot of damage onto that top in tip turret. But again, not enough to quite kill it yet. Crazy dive was there. A lot of people low health thanks to the Greg Assault. But Ari managed to get out, managed to uh, home guard and get straight back out again on full health. So she managed to help clean that fight up a little bit more than normal. And all the Guardian Angels coming out from this day inside honestly aren't doing too much. Everyone's just dying. The Guardian Angels are going off and then they're killed as soon as they stand back up again. So I utterly don't really think that's the greatest of items. Guardian Angels good when you are the one person dying in a four team that's then staying alive but don't have any damage. When that team is not staying alive around you, then you're just going to die again. Yeah, that's one of the things we saw Guardian Angel really uh, take a little bit of a vacation from uh, professional play for a while throughout a lot of Season 3. A lot of teams opting not actually to build it as much as we saw in Season 2. It's pretty much a staple item on nearly every champion, especially for a team like Gambit. But here goes Brobro -Bro into the fight. Charm does land from Mikau, who is managing to get away from this as well. There's a lot of damage that's gone down on to the Danish team, though, as Hoodboss will take out Roldo from the side of that one. Me God Bro trying to get away. Bro Bro will follow him up over the wall. And there's a little bit of uh, confusion here for the Netherlands as Metlex will get caught out. He's going to get dropped very low, desperately trying to get it away. Ace in the hole will get stopped as Gamble gets taken out by Irelia here. And uh, the Netherlands are desperately trying to get something from this, but actually Brobro, who's been chasing Nigobro for a while, might end up falling if the damage gets turned around on him. Nigobro surely is going to get Chase this. chased Godbro way too far, wow. He got kited and killed in the entire chase. Hoodboss does finish him off, but now Ari might kill Aurelia. Yeah, Ari and Aurelia are trading, but I think right now... Morsu is just trying to keep Ari busy because meanwhile Metalex in the base is uh, leading the charge with a couple of super minions in tow. 
Um, that will be the end of game number one of our. Oh, maybe it won't. Is Metlex now oh. trying to X Peke his way around the center? No. And we'll pick that one up. <laughs> Can they clear the minions in time? Morsu and Hood Boss are here. I wonder whether they'll just go straight for it. Morsu is trying to angle around. He can't quite get it. As Mikau is going to land <laughs> the charm onto Hood Boss, but it's not quite enough. That would have been a very, very last-ditch attempt. But the Netherlands do once again come from somewhat of a disadvantage to turn that game around in a very long game there. This time they will take a 1-0 lead over Denmark in the semi-finals. They'll go okay, one game up. That Gragas was devastating, and I really expect to see him banned in the next game. Or at the very least, somewhat different laning against him that could do something different and shut him down. Ari 